Hi everyone, I'm Claire Diggins. I'm part of the product group here at DirecTV Latin America. And joining me today is David Mandel, the new showrunner of Veep, which completely swept the 2015 Emmys this year, winning Best Script, Best Comedy, and many other awards. So we're very excited to have David here with us today. He was also um, the executive producer on Curb Your Enthusiasm, a writer on Seinfeld, and he's here today to talk with us about how the TV industry has evolved, what are the new trends in content and the way that people watch TV. So who better to address these topics than the person behind some of the most beloved comedies of today. So David, thank you so much for oh, joining us. My pleasure, my pleasure. So David, you've been in the industry for quite a while now and I'm curious to know how you've seen content evolve and the way people watch TV evolve and sort of the trends in the industry, how they've evolved over the years. I mean, the biggest thing which Maybe it's obvious, maybe it's not, is really um, when I first got into the industry, when I grew up, you know, TV was at a very specific time on a very specific channel. Right. And quite honestly, when I was first growing up, you had to be home. Mm -hmm. You had to be there. Exactly. You know, uh, I, 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 when I was uh, growing up, they started with the Betamax then the VHS and made their you know made their way. So if you wanted to see Cheers, mm -hmm. you had to be home for Cheers. If you wanted to be you know see Saturday Night Live, it was 11:30 on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And you also I think in that same world also knew to some extent where things were, meaning Saturday Night Live was an NBC show, and in New York City that meant Channel 4, and in LA that was Channel 4, but you know, on somewhere else it was a different channel, somewhere else it was a different channel. But you knew when, where, what channel, and mm -hmm. it was very specific. Um, obviously, as the VHS kind of you know got more popular and cheaper, there was that sense of okay, I don't need to be home, but at the same time, I had to set my tape, I had mm -hmm. to make sure I figured it all out, or had somebody to do it for me, so that I could record whatever Seinfeld at nine o'clock on Thursdays and all of that kind yeah. of stuff, and that's all just gone out the window. People watch what they want to watch, when they want to watch it, and in the most in most cases, I don't even think they necessarily even know where it's coming from. A lot of times it was made for one channel, maybe perhaps a, like a, you know some of the shows in the States, they were made for a channel in the States, but eventually they find their way you know, onto the services like DirecTV, and they're just there for the taking. Exactly. And so it's just so changed because I look at my own children. I have a six and a seven year old, and you know, my six year old is learning to read, but he can find whatever show he wants when he wants it. And there's no sense of, oh, there's ever some time when there's nothing on, because there's always something on yeah. when you can press a button on your DirecTV or whatnot mm -hmm. and get exactly what you want to watch. And that's just a giant change. Yeah. You don't have to go outside anymore. So would you say then that is kind of the biggest new trend that we're seeing today? I think it's the hugest trend because I think it's, it's changed how people are watching, and then the, the corresponding side of it is, how does that then change what someone like myself does behind the camera to sort of get to that point? And it's sort of happened in two, a couple of different ways, which I think are really interesting, which is one, the fact that um, we're beyond just the notion of like, here in America, say three networks and ratings oh, and whatnot. Yeah. You can make more interesting shows, perhaps that have a more niche audience, but they can the, that audience can find it by pressing a button again. Mm -hmm. And that people in the world of binge watching and all of these things, you can get these smaller, more interesting, more difficult shows, shows with off-putting subject matter. You know, once upon a time, nobody wanted to necessarily see a show about mobsters that, you know what I mean? Right. Like, and then it's like, it's oh, The Sopranos, same. exactly. Mm -hmm. So you get these sort of sort of stranger, darker shows that have more of a life because we're not just trying to put them on NBC at 8 p.m. and they have to score X number of ratings. So the fact that there's this ability to sort of, you know, the on-demand, I think, has opened the world to 
smaller, more interesting television, mm -hmm. television that's just more interesting and exciting. Then I think on the storytelling side, you just see in comedy, for example, you've seen, I think, slightly moving away from standard sitcoms, which are wonderful, right. and I love standard sitcoms. I love, you know, I grew up, you know, I watched on my reruns, I watched Odd Couple, mm -hmm. and I Love Lucy and MASH, but those are very much standalone episodes. Right. And there are obviously still shows like that, Big Bang Theory and whatnot, mm -hmm. where it's a standard standalone show but I don't think you binge watch those you right. don't really kind of really want to binge watch them you What's watch next? them when they're on but you don't they don't drive you to the next one but I think you're starting to see more shows like uh, Veep is a good example uh, Silicon Valley is another really good example but uh, it's something that I think started started with shows like Seinfeld a little bit where there's an arc within the sitcom which is a very sort of different thing and so even though you're watching a funny half hour episode it, at the same time it's driving you a little bit into the next one exactly. it's not just comedy it's comedy with sort of an ongoing I don't want to say soap opera storyline, but almost like a soap Sequential. opera that throws you into it. And mm -hmm. that's, I think, a real interesting change because I think it's made comedy more interesting and also more complicated. I mean that in the best version yeah. of complicated. Uh, so I think it's really clever, speaking of Arrested Development, the way that they actually did create a show that was bingeable but that you wanted to rewatch. So that, like you mentioned, so when you get done, it's not, oh, well, I just finished that in one day and moving right. on to the next. It's, I have this content here that I'm going to revisit and that it's, it's interesting enough to it's, go I back to. I mean, in to. that one, you almost sort of had to. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I can only imagine, like, if a show like, uh, you know, what can I say? It wasn't my favorite show, but I know a lot of other people liked it. But a show like Lost or something, mm -hmm. where there were sort of puzzles worked into a the show itself. Puzzles. Not quite sure they knew anyone knew the answers, <laughs> right. but there were those puzzles in there. And you can imagine in a world where, and I'm, I'm assuming somewhere Lost is available on demand, mm -hmm. but in, in a world if, if it had been originally sort of put out that way, imagine the ability to sort of you know, watch it all and then go, I gotta go back and sure. do that again. I, you know, what exactly. Just exactly. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Which I think is just really kind of interesting. And I also think people will t take further advantage of that as you go sort of, you know, as we go mm -hmm. down the path. I think in the sort of, as creators are thinking of new ways of sort of like, what's an interesting show, you know, I think it's only a matter of time till someone there is sort of a uh, an on-demand show like a Lost with like very almost intricate puzzles for the viewers to solve. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would probably be more of a drama than a comedy, right. but I have to assume something like that's coming where the whole point will be to go back and, you know, whatever. Um, the other thing that I think is also really interesting in these days, and it's uh, Lost is maybe not the perfect example, but there are great shows that a lot of people just didn't watch at the time. Yeah. You know, there's shows like one that jumps to mind for me, and again, I have no idea, I have no stake in it or anything like that. Uh, I love that show, Veronica Mars. I don't know if you ever watched that yeah, show. Yeah, uh, about a with sort Kristen of Bell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Kristen Bell is like first big thing. Yeah. She was a detective. The first uh, couple of seasons were these, you know, uh, season long mysteries. Really interesting. At the time, I think it was on, here in the United States, it was, I think, on the WB or something. I think so. It was never much of a ratings hit right. or whatnot. You know, the ability now to say to somebody, hey, that's an incredible show, and they can go, We've oh, my God. It it, yeah, oh, my God, it's there. I found it. Now, all of a sudden, I'm watching it. Yeah. So it's not just what's coming, but it's the ability to kind of go back and raid, I think, some of those lost gems that sort of yeah. fell through the cracks of popular TV, if that makes any mm -hmm. sense. So I do think there's a lot of really interesting older content, too, that people can sort of find. And I've definitely been in those conversations where you're out to dinner, you know, you're talking mm -hmm. about TV, and someone goes, oh, you know what I used to love? I love Veronica Mars or something. And they go, what's that? I don't mm -hmm. even know. And they go, oh, I'm going to put that on my list. And right. you kind of get that sense of they may not love it, they may love it, mm -hmm. but they're going to go check it out and find it. And if they do like it, they could watch all three seasons right. in, you know, as two days they if they want. need to. Yeah, exactly. Right. So yeah. these great on-demand products are enabling people to revisit and you go back. You can revisit, and, uh, forget revisit, discover. Discover, Re right. Yeah, discover things that you didn't know. Yeah. And I do think you are constantly seeing, you know, you see it with those little rare gems, and obviously you're seeing it with, like, the really, the shows we all know and right. love. But I know people that kind of were just like, I think it's time I'm going to watch Mad Men. Right. And I, and I was watching it all along, and I go, oh, 
okay, how are you going to do it? Well, I'm going to press the button yeah. and I'm going to watch them all. And then you get a call two days later. I watched season one. It was great. I'm moving on to two. Yeah. Okay. And that's just an amazing thing. That's yeah. an amazing point because I, I never really thought about how it's making available content that otherwise is not, you can't yeah. find it. You cannot watch it on regular TV. No, it so. doesn't exist. And, you know, it used to be, uh, there were shows I remember loving, uh, you know, there used to be a place like TV Land or whatnot, mm -hmm. where that was the only place maybe you could find old TV. But it's when, it, when yeah, it's on, exactly. when you find um, it. I used to love the show, uh, there were two shows I used to love, uh, St. Elsewhere, which was a medical drama in like the early 80s. Oh, I remember, yep. I've seen it. And it was very episodes. dark and not friendly, yeah. and people died, on, you know, on. patients died. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like a, like a happy... Grey's Anatomy kind of thing where everybody's like in love yeah. and like having sex in the rec room or whatever. Right. You know, it was like dark and horrible. It was a very urban <laughs> Boston hospital. Um, and I can remember like it was airing on like, I don't know, TV land at three in the morning in reruns and trying to like, you know, set okay. my VHS to make sure that five days a week I was recording it. So I, I mean, yeah. you know, and I don't know if St. Elsewhere specifically is available, but the ability that shows like it where you could yeah. press that button. And so if you're hearing about St. Elsewhere for the first time right now, maybe go check, check it, it out. out or Veronica <laughs> Mars or whatever. Yeah. You maybe you check it out, but you discover these yeah. lost gems, which is was wonderful. We're just leaps yeah. and bounds ahead of it's where, amazing. where yeah. everything was. So if you put your viewer cap on, you're sure. a viewer. I'm a viewer. You love I'm a viewer. TV. Yeah. Yeah. So what what in your mind makes a great on demand product a great way for you to watch these shows on demand? What does the product need to have? In terms of the show, you mean? Is it content that you like? Is it the you know it needs to be easy to find the content? Is it? I think for me it's about. I mean, look. Obviously, you want it to be easy to find. Mm -hmm. I think you know the more you can search or you know whether it's you know moving a cursor and kind of you know finding it by an actor or any of that right. kind of stuff that's incredibly helpful because i do think also sometimes you find an actor you like and you might go oh i didn't know they did that again i love the discovery of things right in terms of watching a show it's for me it's going to be content you know mm -hmm. i'm think the audience is very smart in mm -hmm. a really good way and so i think you know it is definitely content you know because if i can find something i like i mean i remember um, when I was younger, I used to love when I'd find a series of books, oh, and, which yes. is a very big thing more yeah. when you're a kid, I think, than when you're an adult. Although True. there are a lot of like running books, like the Jack Reacher yeah. series and whatnot, and Little things House like on yeah, the Prairie. Little House. We've been reading those to my kids. <laughs> so you would find a book and you'd be thrilled if there were ten of them Absolutely. or twenty of them. And I think it's the same thing. So I will definitely, you know, when a season starts or I hear about a show, I will check it out, mm -hmm. and if I like it. That's when I press the button the second time to go, give me all Let's of them. Let's do it. Yeah, Let's, I'm, I'm yeah, ready to commit. I'm, I'm ready in. to get married. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And so, the and the moment where you get to press that button mm -hmm. and go, I want them all, I can't wait. You're so excited. It's a pretty excited. exciting moment, yeah. yeah. And you, you start to hear people talking about, um, like, I need more shows. I'm running out of shows. I don't have a show right now. I just made my way through all oh, yeah. of blank, blank, and blank. Do you have any good recommendations? And it's very funny because people are really talking about the desire to have a show. My wife, for example, she wakes up in the morning and she likes to do her exercise bike. And mm -hmm. she has, like, an iPad there. Yeah. And she likes Cutter to watch shows. something on the iPad. And she was saying the other day, like, oh, I ran, I'm running out. What you know? You know, and we had a discussion. of like, yeah. want to try this or this or this. And she was like, okay. So um, you mentioned your, your wife is on the iPad, so obviously people are watching content not just on the big screen anymore. We've got a lot of people watching shows and movies even on iPads, phones. I was wondering if, if that plays a part in the way that you shoot the show or if the way that you, you write the show, is that having any impact at all? Look, I think in a perfect world, and I think, you know, like film directors would probably say the same thing. I think a film director would love you to go to a theater right. and see it in a theater. This is what this was Yes, made exactly. For. And from a television viewing standpoint, I guess I would argue when we make it such as it is, not that we're perhaps as visual as a great movie, but I do think in a perfect world you are watching on a TV, you're yeah. watching it big. Because I think the great actress, Julia Louis-Dreyfus is a perfect example. I love her. You want to see her face, you want to see the, the, what the, she do yes, body? exactly. The, the, yeah. the movement, the, 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 the crinkle, the, yeah. the, the, the looks, the breaths, yeah. everything is like, the venom, yeah, in exactly. Case. The <laughs> eyes, like what she does with her eyes alone. Yeah. She doesn't even need to speak. That's how good she is. Mm -hmm. Um, and so if you're watching down here, 
you know, you're missing it. You're missing some things. That being said, I completely understand that you love the show so much, and you're on a boring bus ride or right. a subway ride or wherever, and I get it. I mm -hmm. completely get it. So in a perfect world, you're watching on a nice big screen. But it is fantastic that you can watch it in all these, these other places. David, congratulations on all your success, and best of luck to you with the new season of Veep, and thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you.